by far my favorite morning routine is having 20 employees. You just broke all of my beliefs. I put everything on the table and I knew that there's no coming back. The very first product they tested was a massive Facebook ads winner in the US. This person made me my first $100,000 in sales for my Shopify dropshipping business in less than three months when I was still in high school. His name is Michael Burstyn. He's got one of the largest channels for e-commerce and dropshipping specifically, and his students have made multiple eight figures in combined revenue. I became a student of him back in 2020, and after becoming successful with dropshipping, I was a coach in his program for more than two years. In his program, he's taking complete beginners and turning them into wildly profitable store owners from scratch. Some of the guys, including me, scale to multiple six figures per month in record time. In this video, Michael and I will share everything we've learned about e-commerce and business in general for the past three years with no filter and no bullshit. This one is special to me, so I hope that you enjoy it. I'm glad to make another video with you, bro. It's gonna be our third one, I think, yeah, the third video. I'm not sure if you guys know, but Michael is my first and some of my most important important mentors throughout my e-commerce journey. And around three and a half years ago, I made one of the biggest bets in my life. So I pretty much risked more than half of my net worth and savings back then to invest into a mentorship program for a guy that I pretty much had no idea about. Um, and it turned out to be one of the best decisions that I've ever made. Um, Michael helped me uh, scale my first very successful e-commerce store to more than 100k in revenue in over uh, in just over three months, and it was a it was a crazy story back then when um, when there was a lot of stuff going going around in the world in 2020. So yeah, I'm happy to have you here, bro. And if you guys wanna. Learn more about Michael, go check out his his channel. Uh, he's doing some of the best dropshipping content out there uh, without <laughs> helping, helping you up. So definitely check him out and yeah, let's get it started. Yeah, man, appreciate the introduction. Um, first of all, I have to say like you, you're one of the OGs <laughs> like from, from the program. You're for sure one of the first like 20 or 30 students I, I had overall. Um, so, so it's good to see you like be at this point as well. And um, I think throughout this whole journey for you, for you, there was a really, really big learning curve. I remember all the, I, I remember like having the calls with you and also the problems you had talking back then versus seeing you grow later on. Um, it was like truly amazing to, to see all of that, especially um, later on when you started also helping out with a program and helping with the with with coaching basically uh, my students and, and helping me out in, in this way um yeah like you're one of the the, the the top top guys from the program because you obviously did like how much did you do at this point uh, i think it's like 6.5 million dollars with one product just just crush it with the one product that's yeah. great. Um, yeah, and we're doing like 10 to 15k days right now. Like it's Q4 is starting to pick up like crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. It's wild. Um, what would you say did you do different than other people to actually make it work so long term? I think first of all, I was just very uh limited in terms of time because I was also full time in, in college. So mm -hmm. I had like little to no time to uh to do new product tests in a, in a good way, which forced me to be focused, which then later turned out to be a very good decision because I could focus on that, uh, on that single product and really make the store look perfect, nail down the offer, uh, test creators consistently and turn it into a proper brand, uh, mm -hmm. which over the three year period uh, turned out to be something amazing. And I honestly didn't even expect that like i think none of us expected such a product which is in a like a slightly weird niche yeah. to be that profitable long term uh but yeah i mean imagine like with such a product we stay consistent for such a long period of time I mean, imagine with something broader and bigger with with like more with more retention uh what else it could have been um but nevertheless it was a great learning experience with 
a lot of ups and downs. But honestly, this offer was became very successful almost overnight because I knew the importance of offer testing. And that's something that I got from you because the first successful store that we had was uh, was successful because of one simple offer that we tested. So do you want to speak more about that? Yeah, we can, we can talk about it. It's fine, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the offer was pretty much free plus shipping, which in my head when we started with Michael was crazy. Like I just signed a contract with this guy and I, I, and I started paying him money. And then on the first call, he said, we're going to do free plus shipping. And I was blown out of, out of my mind because I thought that um, free plus shipping was dead, like low ticket product cannot work anymore, stuff like that. I thought this was stuff from 2016. And then he said, we're going to do free plus shipping. There's no other way around it. I was like, fine. <laughs> and what happened then was um, I followed the program. I followed all of the guidance. I... Uh, I listed a bunch of products on my spreadsheet. We did a first review. And then you said, go for another week. Something else can pop up. And I was like, uh, sure, I'm going to do some more research. So I was just looking at products on my Facebook feed. And I stumbled upon one specific product that I'm going uh, to mention in a few seconds. And on the next call, you were like, this can be a massive winner. Uh, and... I was very skeptical about it, to be honest. I created a store, all that stuff. The ads were very simple. Um, I just put a few score stoppers on a competitor video. Back then, this was more than enough to, to start testing things out. Um, and initially, nothing happened. Like We had almost no conversions in the beginning. And then you did another review of my store. And you were like, bro, like your, your store doesn't have, even have PayPal. Um, and I thought, do we even need this? And you said, yeah, you like, it's literally a game changer. So I added PayPal to the store and our store conversion rate went from 2% to like, I think seven, eight percent overnight. And from there we optimized the ad account. We started scaling up and it went to like 11, 12% on the best days at more than 4k per day. I think I hit even a few 5k days before the guy, um, before my PayPal got shut down, which is whole another story. But it's just crazy how one single offer can change your life completely. Because back then, I was living in Bulgaria. That's a Eastern European country where the average salary is like 1,000 euros per month. And I remember one of the best days before, um, before I had to lower the ad spend because of the PayPal ban, I was doing like 1.5 game profit per day. And that was, I don't know, that was out of this world. I know there are people in the US that are used to six figure salaries and stuff. And for them doing 10K profit in a single month with drop shipping is nothing. But for an 18 year old kid living in Eastern Europe, that was just, I don't know. That was a different universe. So, yeah. and I think I was, I was definitely not, not the only guy who was experiencing uh, experiencing this back then. So can you tell us more about the other successful students and pretty much the the wolf pack that we had in the beginning? Uh, and they all turned out to be very successful uh, dropshippers and entrepreneurs in general. So can you tell, uh, tell us more about, about those people? Yeah, for sure. So very first of all, back in the day, it was like, what, I think 2019, 2020, when we started. Yeah. Very different world in dropshipping. Everything was was way, way different. And it was a, a moment where everybody was 100% sure that free plus shipping is dead. And like free plus shipping, no one was teaching, no one was talking about it, no one was doing it or, at, at all. And for some weird reason, I had a guy who told me to do it and it worked like crazy for me. And I basically started teaching it as I think the only person in the whole industry. And that was, all, I think that was the reason why it worked so well, because if nobody is doing something, it actually opens up the window of this working again, because why, why free plus trading, for example, died down was everybody was doing it. And if you, as a consumer go on Facebook and you constantly see free product, free product, free product, 
you went on one of them and then you see a high shipping and then you you feel scammed or whatever, you're going to be like, all right, th this whole thing, you don't trust it anymore. However, because nobody is doing it, like, because everybody stopped doing it, it, it changed up the entire thing. And because we were a small group of people who did only that, it just crushed. And I remember how the success rates of like students testing the first, very, very first product and making it work was like, 50% of something like 50% think about this 50% of people who joined the very first product they tested was a massive Facebook ads winner in the US which is unheard of like nothing like that existed and um yeah like you were you were one of them and I, I definitely saw how in the beginning everybody was super skeptical like everybody was so skeptical about this this whole like low ticket world because it's no, because nobody is talking about it. Because but... it's just contrarian thinking, right? Yeah. But it's the one thing that can give you the massive profits. It's the one thing that can that can like give you that competitive advantage. Because mm -hmm. if you copy, that's something that I'm seeing over and over and over again. Also, now that I'm uh, getting more into the YouTube game, I'm, uh, YouTube game, and I'm you know looking at creators and stuff like that. The most controversial people, like Alex Hormozzi, Andrew Tate, all those people they in their content in the way that they behave and behave 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 anyways <laughs> in the way that they behave is just completely different to anybody else like you have all those business people talking about uh business stuff on youtube wearing suits and stuff like that and you, then you have alex Pomozi wearing just a hat and a tank top doing mm -hmm. like 10 times more than all of those people combined and telling you completely opposite things and they're like, wait, I got to listen to that guy. And it's the same thing in the marketplace whenever you're selling a product or, or a service or whatever it is, the person that is the most differentiated and does things differently and is kind of ahead of the crowd gets the most of the pie, right? I've seen one really interesting thing, especially with personal branding. And it's like, it's literally a hack to personal brand, which is the parasite strategy. You basically take a common belief some like people like I specifically did this with branding and dropshipping. Like in this dropshipping world, everybody says you have to brand your store. Your store is super important, whatever. I took that and I understood, all right, if I say something against that, everybody is going to at least stop for a second and listen. Because if I say your store doesn't matter, you shouldn't brand. Everybody's going to be like, what the fuck is this guy saying? I know I have to brand. I know the store matters. I need to listen to this. And then I give them really logical, good explanations on why I'm right. And then all of a sudden, the most interesting thing happens. They blame every single problem which they ever had on branding. I gave them an alternative route. If you think a beginner dropshipper sitting on YouTube watching a YouTube video, most likely he's not successful. There is a very, very high chance he's yeah. not successful. He tried it out. It didn't work. He blames the thing which I basically gave him on his misery and this is a like it's a game changer where you basically just convince him of that being the reason i never said that that's the reason for him specifically yeah but basically he's gonna blame that as he, ah that's what i did wrong i get it now i focus too much on my store i did branding that's why it didn't work and all of a sudden he starts hearing other people on youtube saying talking about branding and he feels like they are scammers he feels like he's in on it but everybody else is like scamming and lying and whatever. And you create this, this, this kind of, kind of um, like space where everybody all of a sudden changed their belief. Whenever you change your, whenever you change somebody's belief, they start trusting you way more every single time. And um, obviously within the program, it was the same thing. If, if I tell you free shipping works and you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? saying? And then it actually does work. Instantly, you're going to be like every single person out there who says low ticket doesn't work. You're going to be like, he has no clue what he's talking about, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you caught that, but like the last minute out there was just marketing genius. Uh, in like, and you can apply this thing to, to everything. And yeah. I remember back then, like you just broke all of my beliefs. Mm -hmm. Like I put everything, uh, I put everything on the table and I knew that there's no coming back. And yeah. then when you said that we're going to test a strategy that I thought was impossible to pull off in 2020, um, I was like, damn, this guy got to be right. 
or I'm out of the game mm -hmm. and you prove to be right. Yeah. So you can apply this, like it's a mental framework. Like it's not a thing that you, you can just apply to personal branding. It's also something that you can apply to your personal life as well. Like think about all this, mm, um, I don't know, not bullshit advice, but things like making your bed, things like you have to do this 10 step morning routine in order to be successful. Like sure, if you are uh, well, uh, if you have a good hygiene, if you take care of yourself, of course, it's going to increase if, increase your chances of being successful, you having a clear mind and stuff like that. But it's not the main thing that that pushes people to that, right? Like what's your take on that? No, 100%. Like my, by far, my favorite morning routine is having 20 employees because it doesn't matter at all what I do the entire morning. Shit is done. Like because I have 20 people working for me, nothing what I do literally matters. It doesn't matter. I can meditate, not meditate, make my bed, not make my bed, shower, not shower, go to the gym. Not get... I can do that for me. It's not connected to my money. Last month, I was literally stuck in Israel during war and had a bunch of family issues was stuck with like I was I was only with them working maybe in the entire month max I worked 10 hours in the entire month and I made more last month than in my entire life like that was my best month ever it's not connected to my time because I have people around me which are basically helping me out and um yeah that that's just the the the, the main learning I had over the years which is after you get to a certain level it's not you, which is a good entrepreneur. It's just you identifying people which are good. And that's it. Like, yeah. you're, you're, like your actions are so invaluable because if like I could spend an entire week doing something or I can take one cent, I can say one sentence to an employee and he's going to spend his entire week. And my one sentence literally was the thing which got everything done. That was, yeah. I mean. so Yeah. Um, I think, I think employees overall is, is the biggest hack I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the path to actually becoming a business, a businessman. Like I see a lot of like, I don't call them brand owners because they don't technically own a brand, but it's like door owners who are sure they're, they're doing numbers. They're making profit and stuff like that, but they're a one man army and they're, they're doing even the customer support themselves, even though it's stupid, but like, this is not a proper business. Imagine you. Uh, you go into a hospital tomorrow and what happens to the business? Like it goes down and you, it's not sustainable at all. But I think the most important skill is just identifying leverage. So like identifying which are the things that with your, with your skill set, with pretty much with your playing cards that you have right now, you can use so that you can get to the, to the next level and to the next level and to the next level. Because yeah. when we, when we were all starting out, we only, cut our time so if time is our most valuable resource we want to make money the best thing is to use most of our time to make money and not do all sorts of stupid shit like meditating for two hours going on i don't know vacations without deserving it but yeah. like that should be a motivation for everybody because you have to earn that like you have to earn the comfort of having 20 employees because it was also tied to a lot of discomfort. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen your journey and over the past two years, I've been seeing you on YouTube pumping out video and video and video and not getting out of the office. So it's just levels of the game, but like at every level you have to identify leverage, right? So for a dropshipping beginner who might be watching this, which are the highest leverage activities that they can do? And uh, and spoiler alert, it's not making your bet. Well, um, I, I would say it depends on what level you are at. If you're starting out, um, it's just product research, learning how to like do good videos, creatives and stuff like that. Um, I assume on this channel, we're talking talking more to advanced people. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if you are advanced um, and let's say you're making like, 100k a month um and everything is doing well but you're not able to scale that it's going to be a couple of things um number one understanding that you have to invest into backups you have to have a bunch of backup everything's to be able to make things consistent that's number one number two is like and by the way back, backups to me mean either 
you have one product which is just like everything about it is perfect or you have multiple products you are like one of the special cases where you actually pulled it off where where you made one product work consistently for the last years without a backup product normally i would yeah. recommend but obviously um you you crushed it with this one so 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 i cannot say anything against that but um yeah like overall i would say if you want to go the safe route i would I recommend having multiple like not have all eggs in one basket that's number one number two is it's it's basically just optimizing everything you have so for example email marketing creatives conversion rate the facebook ads management and stuff like that those are all thing those are all things which which are just micromanagements which can actually make a huge impact and for example if you learn one average order value hack it will stay for the rest of your life you're you're forever going to make 2 dollars more per order forever yeah and that one specific change is going to stay there so i think investing into like knowledge there is the main one because you don't know what you don't know and you like you think you are taking all everything out of AOV I'm like I know probably 99% of people who come to me who start who already made 100k a month they didn't focus on that they they something else was working for them and that's why yeah. it worked but AOV was not optimized at all they don't have every single upsell like on like on point they don't have multiple products. They don't have multiple Facebook ad accounts. They don't have like um, agency accounts, even in some cases. They they don't know what to do with their feedback score. They, they have a bunch of small issues which, which all add up and they have a black box overall. Like when you, when you have one thing and if it happens, the entire business crashes. For example, if you have one ad account and that goes down, the entire business is gone. You have that as the black box and you cannot have any black boxes in your business. So... I'd say in the in the advanced world, that's just the main one, like minimizing risks everywhere and yeah. everything you have. Um, but I'm genuinely curious about about how you actually managed to, to pull this off with one product. Like, what would you say was like were the main reasons why you could actually do this? Yeah, there's there's a couple of things. Uh, so thank you so much for bringing up the small optimizations over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I realized that I've done. Probably it's it's very conservative, but I probably have optimized my gross margin by over five percent. It's actually it's over ten percent. But even if we do five percent, um, and you increase your gross margin by five percent, which means like the margin that you have before spending on ads, mm -hmm. on a six million dollar revenue, five percent is a lot. Yeah, because like only one percent is sixty k. And 5% is 300K. So like I made 300K in additional profit that I otherwise couldn't, wouldn't have made if I didn't optimize those 5%. So like when you're in the beginning and you're doing uh, some decent numbers, you're already starting to, to see some profit uh, and campaigns are running well. It's so easy to oversee all those things because there's, things are just running great. Like in our brand, in the beginning, we had six ROAS. I had... 2.2 break even ROAS, but I didn't really care. Like I was netting 30%, everything was great and life was good. But one of the inevitable things that are going to happen, especially if you're running ads, is that your ROAS over a long period of time will gradually drop, like your recipients uh, become higher, you're reaching out to coder and coder audiences and stuff like that. So it's very normal for your ROAS to drop if you're selling the same product. So you need to start optimizing your store and your whole offer and your funnel, pretty much everything from the get-go. Not wait for, for things to crash and then start optimizing, but do it right away. Because like those $3 in profit, if you make 1,000 orders this month, it's like $3,000 in profit. You can outsource your whole business with $3,000. Uh, especially in the beginning stages when it's very lean and you can just have all the time for yourself. You don't even need to, to work additionally. That was one thing. And the other thing, it's just constantly reinvesting into branded assets. And it's, again, not, it's not about the store. Like I tried three different teams. <laughs> this thing just doesn't convert any better. This version looks 10 times better than the first version. The first version still converted better than now. 
just because of the sheer demand that we have to, for the product. But like, it's not just a store. Like if you have a branded store, that doesn't mean you have a brand. It's more about branded content and branded narrative in a way. So you're just putting out content out there st strategically in social media in the marketplace so that people recognize you as the go-to brand for that product. And I think that's what made it successful. Like we didn't have a lot of competitors on Facebook. There was only one main store who I think that I think fizzled out at some point. Uh, and we pretty much dominated the Facebook space and we had a very distinctive offer <clears throat> and it made a lot of sense for, uh, for the brand because it was buy one, get one free offer. It's also a giftable product. Uh, you can connect the two products. So it's very distinctive. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a very good deal for the customers because other products are costing a lot more. Uh, for the same amount of features and stuff like that. So we had unique positioning in the marketplace that allowed us to stay there in the long run and combined with good branding, good content, uh, and later on a good product uh, product launching strategy, uh, we were able to, uh, to sell it for more than three years. And that's not a unique product. It's a dropshipping product. We still pay our supplier on a dropshipping basis, even though we're sourcing from the US. Mm -hmm. So... If I was able to do that in a very competitive industry with a seasonal product, with one main traffic channel and only one product, I think uh, people who have higher chances in a better industry and a better marketplace don't have any excuse to not get at least seven figures per year. Um, and to answer your question, like I think it was a little bit of a dumb mistake trying to force only one specific skew and a, one specific product to work because we could have made so much money just doing more upsells. And when you say backups, I see it more as backups within the niche if we're talking about that particular business. But like if you're selling one main version of the product, it's very dumb. And I'm realizing that as we speak, that it's very dumb to bet that this product is going to work forever. And we've had definitely had some problems with margin, especially during low seasons where we were trying to force this product to work, but it was just not working that well. And then we did a product launch with a 2.0 version, pretty much a new improved version of the product. And it crushed it and it crushed it for a year and a half now. And then we introduced the third product, which is just the same product with a different, different colors on it, like different, uh, different technology that the supplier used for the design um, with a cool marketing twist around it. And it crushed it again. So we're technically selling the same stuff, but in new different ways. And that's what's keeping it sustainably. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it as, as if I'm testing new products, but it's building upon existing experience that you have within the niche. And if you choose the path to, to make a proper brand, I think it's definitely worth just diving very deep in the needs of the marketplace and just like really being very scientific about your customer and really obsessing about it so that you know what they're going to like next. Because it's like, it's like marriage. Like it's, it's like mar marrying your ideal customer so that you can serve them over the long run and deliver them better and better and better products. So what's your take on that? Well, yeah, first of all, I want to touch on a couple of things you said here. Um, number one is the thing which you said with optimization. Um, people don't realize that optimizing small things is pure profit. It's not, it's not adding on the revenue, it's adding on the profit. When you said you optimize the 5% from the, from the gross margin, that's profit. If you get... $2 extra on AOV, normally it's going to be like 20 cents on, on, on product cost extra and almost everything is profit. If you get a higher conversion rate, it's profit. If you get everything you do, which is optimizing on something which is already working is pure profit, not revenue. And people confuse that because you see a number, let's say your AOV is $20 and I get an order for normally $20. Cool. If it's 22, you don't feel way better about it it's just two dollars yeah. 
whatever, who cares? But in reality, it's $2 off your profit, which is, it's probably like 10% of your profit margin or something like that. It's, it's super, super high. So um, that's the very first thing. And the second thing, you, like, I think it's very easy to misunderstand what you also said with the buy one, get one free thing. It only works in your case. You, people shouldn't take that as an example and be like, yeah, I should, I should always for sure do, uh, do, do buy one, get one free. It worked because you had a product where people wanted to have two and you gifted them the second one. And that's what they were happy about. Like that's yeah. a very big difference versus a product who, which is just a, a nice product, which is there to have one piece. It's, it's a huge difference. So yeah, I, I just, I just wanted to say that also, I think what what you did really well is I remember how much you struggled with all the payment providers and PayPal and stuff in the very beginning. And you already had the foundation to battle all of that before you started this brand, because um, that's something which I know so many people who got to high levels without failing and they didn't make it work consistent because of that. Like I have so many examples of people who crushed it got kind of lucky but it's like not really like they didn't face any adversity what i said in the beginning if 50 percent of the people who joined made it by product one it doesn't mean that they're they're beasts or animals in any they're yeah. just, just there following a good strategy and being like it, it kind of works and then they start being motivated through that but they did, never faced any problems no adversity no nothing and that led to a bunch of people falling down and switching businesses and not making it work in other ones, unfortunately. Um, so first of all, did you ever have those thoughts of switching something after you had those insane crashes, which I remember like the years ago, um, before you had this brand, it was really tough to push through it with all the PayPal stuff. Did you think of switching business models, switching, et cetera? Oh yeah, 100%. Like I remember, uh when paypal sh uh shut down my my account and i had like fifteen thousand dollars in it and just because i did some very good cash flow planning i was able to pay the supplier and ship out all the orders in a timely manner and stuff like that but then what happened was that was back in may and then i in june or july i was able to regain the access to the account and everything was running smoothly but the product was not working anymore. So I was testing a lot of ads, but it didn't work anymore. So I had the whole summer without a winner with more than $10,000 on hold in PayPal uh, from the previous hold. And that was before, uh, that was me at 18 before I had to go to Vienna and move. And I had so many expenses coming up and I literally had no idea what to do. That's like one of the times when I thought, okay, is this really going to work? But the quick answer was, I have no other option. So like, it doesn't matter if it works out or not. I just have to continue doing that. And of course we, we had the mentorship and everything. So like, I, I, I just needed to, I just needed to do that. And whenever you're, whenever you burn your boat, boats, you just, you just do it no matter what. And more often than not, you ended up, uh, you end up, you know, you end up succeeding and really pushing through it. Yeah. And the other time was mm, after I made some very good money uh, with the store and I had some goals that I had already achieved, I felt a little bit depressed. So it was very strange because it was not because I was lacking something it was because i had no goals that i wanted to achieve like nothing specific and it's also because i was not surrounded by the right people and i didn't have the right community around me and i was really feeling pretty lonely so in those specific moments it's very deadly because you have no one around you to push you you have no obligations no commitments to really uh, help you get out of the rut and you you honestly have nothing to complain about in your life and you still feel shitty and that's when you start you know uh, that's when you start just rethinking your life reconsidering your choices should I switch the industry should I do this should I just 
sell everything and go to a, I don't know, isolated Taiwan or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just very important to have the right people around you who just, who just keep you accountable. And that's something that I, uh, that I was enjoying a lot in the program. Like we were pushing a lot. We were constantly communicating with each other. Like how are you dealing with this? I have this problem, like PayPal stop me or Facebook ban me and stuff like that. And we were helping each other, but I didn't have that anymore. So I felt kind of lost. And that's when, that's, that's, I think the more, that, uh, that's, I think the, the deadlier type of, uh, type of depression you can, we can fall into, but I'm curious for you, like you've been very, very consistent in all of your work and, and pretty much everything that you do, especially with the YouTube channel and stuff like that. Like you have to stay consistent for your audience, right? Yeah. How, how do you keep up with that? Well, it's. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of things to 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 pre-emphasize here. Is number one, it's very difficult to keep going when you have in front of your eyes how much you're 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 making and how much like how how little you need extra money in reality, and it doesn't feel like I'm doing it for the money. Um, I genuinely, I see this personal brand thing as something which I want to master because I just see so much potential in it and so many aspects in, in, in of my life because number one is the skill of speaking in front of the camera is huge because it's literally sales calls on steroids if you know how to do sales calls well but then all of a sudden you literally talk in front of the camera and you're doing the sales call to everybody to thousands of people at the same time so this 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 whole personal brand was to me one of the most life-changing experiences ever and it also held me accountable because i think what you said earlier um is is super true that everybody watches me and i know that even though really nobody gives a fuck i would feel like a bitch if i would stop uploading because i promised literally that's why i promised it years ago i will not not upload less than two times a week forever and that's what i'm doing three I'm, I'm keeping up with three times a week basically every week and if i didn't post i'm going to post one more the next week so it's it's literally on average over the last two and a half or three years it's that and it's 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 very easy to hold yourself to the standard when it's not you when it's you fearing other people to to basically judge you and it's it's very very like there's so many hacks to consistency because i i was talking about this with mikey again i don't know if people mm -hmm. on the channel will know him or not but basically a guy who has like a journey channel which which i helped out and he has a journey channel where he documents his journey of failing for for with drop shipping for like a year straight i come in help him no big deal whatever but the it's, point it's is some of the best collaborations in youtube history out there it's, it is a video. <laughs> Definitely wild. check it out. It's wild. But basically, he was telling me about it. He did drop shipping because of the journey channel. Like he wanted to quit drop shipping, but he kept going because he knew everybody's watching him and he presented himself as the guy who's not going to quit. And you just want to live up to that expectation. So the same way I told like my parents, I'm not going to college, I'm doing dropshipping full time. That was a thing which I couldn't get out of anymore. I understood. That's it. I committed myself to this. I'm not going to do anything else. And the same thing with the coaching here. It's like, yeah, the, the, the network I've built through this is something which I've never, I, I would never, like, I, I would never even envision having something like this because through this program, I learned, I, I, I gained two things. Number one is... I started hiring students, which is the the best way of hiring I've ever seen in my life. If I hire a random person after an interview, I had him for an hour in an interview, another hour in an interview, and then I hire him. That's it. If I, I if I if I hire a student, I have been working with him for a month. I know him. I know how he like he's asking me about his job. He, he asked, like, if I, I understand, if he's going to tell me something like, I'm currently at my job, I'm doing my dropshipping stuff at my job because my boss is now looking at me. Yeah. I Like, he's going to tell me that because he doesn't see me as a potential, 
like employee or something like that. I'm, yeah. I'm so everybody's super honest and it's just, it, it's literally a cheat because it's hundreds and hundreds of students, which I had, I just picked the best ones. Like those are they the ones. They it, right? Exactly, exactly. Those crystallized like themselves out of hundreds of people. And um, yeah, like building a, a network like that was just invaluable. And I just know I have a bunch of people who are thankful to me who I can reach out whenever I want to. Like I, I understand if I need any help from most of my students, they're going to help me out. And that's that's just something which is almost impossible to reach with a business which is not like a, a, a coaching or service-based thing where you talk to real people. And that's why what I enjoy about it so much. So yeah, like the whole the whole thing with staying productive. It's 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 genuinely like me doing YouTube videos at this point. I can tell you the process. The process is this. I get 10 scripts read, like I I I I get 10 scripts ready, which are not written by me. It's a person from the team who mm -hmm. knows everything I'm doing for the last years. He knows how I'm thinking, he knows everything about it. He writes the scripts Crazy. with bullet points. I sit in front of the camera. There's a person behind the camera who just tells me, all right, sit here. I'm going to press record. You're going to start with this video. Now you film this. Now you film this. Now you film this. I filmed it. I stand up and I forget about it. And all of a sudden, magically, they appear perfectly edited on my channel. I posted and everything is done. And it's not like, am I disciplined for that? Not really. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a setup I have, which allows me to film three days a month and that's it like it's, it's nothing it's not I, I don't even see that as something which i would proud myself of being super disciplined it's more i proud myself of being able to not have to be disciplined like that i, I yeah. genuinely don't like i build a system around everything so my lazy ass is still gonna do it yeah yeah, yeah it's like just getting the permission to do this stuff right it's like building the blocks and putting them in the right way so that you can have a house that you can go in and lay on the bed and like not even have to do anything, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. It's the same thing. Like my girlfriend was complaining about that I'm like throwing my clothes around on the on the floor. And I I told her, listen, <laughs> put a basket in next to the bed where there all the, the dirty laundry is gonna be. I will never ever in my life throw anything on the floor because there's literally a basket next to the bed. That's it. Since then, I've never put anything on the floor. And it's very, it's just a system. I don't have to be disciplined anymore. I can do everything. Like nothing has changed except for this small tweak, which is the exact same everywhere. If you want to go consistently to the gym, just meet up with your friend and go with him. It's so, it's so much easier if you say, if you, if you have two friends and you say, all right, Every Tuesday at 7 p.m., we're meeting up at the gym. You're not going to miss that because especially if it's one person, he's going to wait for you and stuff like that. You already committed to that time. It's very easy to go to the gym now. If you pay for a personal, that's why personal trainers work. It's just accountability. So yeah, and I, yeah, you just need to understand that part. Yeah, and I think it's on steroids when you pay for that person. Like when you pay for a coach and when you know it's a it's a one on one thing and and I think it's you're even more committed to just showing up and making it work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I literally had like I I was starting to play chess a little bit, hired a coach which is gonna help me with chess. I started while I had the lessons with them, in between the lessons, I had them like only once a week, I played an insane amount of chess. I stopped working with a coach. And I just stopped playing by myself. Not like just because we had some logistical issue where we didn't schedule meetings anymore. Yeah. And that, that was it. That was it. I stopped. I literally just because of the coaching I had there, I kept doing it in my private life because I understood. All right. He told me to do this this week and I have to do it. I'm going to be a bitch if I don't show up with the, with the things I didn't do. Like I, that's it. You know, so you always, always, always need to think how to make your life easier not harder and it's a it's it might sound cool to be this david goggins guy who's just crushing everybody because he's outworking them but i'm not him i am not like i am i don't proud myself at being that guy i just know that 
I will achieve similar results with other with another route. And yeah. I respect that guy. Like, like that's an amazing, like all the things he's doing, obviously amazing accomplishments, etc. I don't even want to like talk it down. I'm just saying that there's tons of ways around it. And there's a lot of shortcuts which are going to get you the actual results. Maybe you're going to get less growth out of it, but the results, if you're only speaking about the results, the money, getting fit, whatever it is, like those things, you're going to get to them closer if you do this right. So whenever you think which habits you're having, try to just change it up by implementing a system. If you are scrolling on Instagram every day, just delete Instagram. You're not going to be able to stay away. Just delete it. And that's it. You know, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. Exactly. And you can just replace it with doing product research. And <laughs> all of a sudden you're finding five potential winners per day. Just like that. It's, it's, you're getting the same dopamine from scrolling through ad spy <laughs> compared to scrolling on Instagram. Right. Oh, like it's the yeah. same thing. And I think people just mis mistake it because they see athletes uh, athletes on, on YouTube or, or on a sports TV or whatever. And I think the only way to do stuff is through hard work. And for athletes, that's the case because they're, they're freelancers pretty much. The, the only thing that I have that they have is their body and their team. And if it's a single person sport like tennis, it's only their body and their trainer, or I don't know, probably one or two more people that are involved with that. But like, they don't have much leverage outside of their body so like they cannot spend time training employees how to do their swings or how to do their work they just need to spend the most time working out but you as an entrepreneur are playing playing a different game so you taking rest to think about stuff thinking about how to optimize processes thinking how to test a different offer thinking how to i don't know make a new creative for a uh, for a new angle that could be your blue ocean angle I don't know, but those things are much more productive in the long run and it will give you much more peace of mind and money compared to just blasting through tasks, doing stuff because you love working hard and just trying to feel productive. But it really depends how you define productivity because for an athlete, the only way to be productive is to just train the most and recover the best. And athletes also said that recovery is the most important thing, which is kind of controversial. But you as an entrepreneur have a lot more leverage. You can leverage your money. You can leverage other people's time. You can leverage platforms. You can leverage a lot of things. Yeah. It's just that you have to recognize the game that you're playing and the things that you're optimizing for. Because if I want to be the, the most jacked ass person and have the, the best body, like I have the genetics to do that, but I don't have the time to do that. So I can just go to the gym three times, three times per week, fast a little bit, eat healthy, not crazy, and get 80% of the result. And that's what I've been doing for the past few years. And my body looks well. I eat one kilogram of ice cream per week, despite of that. And I look just fine. And everyone is doing, doing me compliments. And I'm not doing any of this fancy stuff that everybody's teaching. So yeah, it's just very important to know what things you're optimizing for and what what game you are playing. So I think you, everyone should just adapt this mindset to pretty much every stage of their, uh, to pretty much any area of their life. It's the same for business. It's the same for your personal life uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. I, th I think um, what people need to start doing is stop and think. Whatever, Whenever you're doing something, stop and think if there's a better option. Instead of starting to do the task, hold on a second, can somebody else do it for me? If yes, then why am I doing it? If you already have a successful business, why the fuck are you doing specific things which you don't need to do? And so the answer for that is gonna be, yeah, I don't know a good person and whatever, cool. Instead of doing the task, find a good person, teach the person, it's gonna take triple the amount of time which it would have taken to just do the tasks. However, it's going to be there forever. And it's not going to stop being there because that's the beauty of a system. If you have a good employee and you train them once, that's it. it you, you have to put, like you have to front load the time investment and then that's done. 
you have a good system of anything and it stays. So the, the main thing everybody should be doing at a higher level is exactly that. It's finding options on where to save time and where to make systems. And a very common question, which I've, I've been hearing tons of times is, yeah, but what do I, what do I do then with my time? I like, I, I heard this Mikey, like Mikey was saying that Mikey again, he was like, all right, I hired those product research guys. Now I don't know what to do with my time. What the fuck am I doing now? I, I was scrolling all day for product research. Now I like, what am I doing now? You're going to figure it out. Don't worry. Like first outsource the time and then figure out what you're going to do. And it, it should never be an excuse of, I don't have anything better to do. It doesn't really make sense to pay another person because you will have anything, but be something better to do. And on top of that, you're going to have a thought which is going to appear in your head, which is going to change everything. I've seen this so often where I don't do shit for the whole day. However, I have one thought, which is going to make me literally hundreds of thousands of dollars extra because, because I had this space in my head. So I consider that a super productive day, by the way. And most people are going to be judging their day by the tasks and not the outcomes. I judge my days by the outcomes. I know that the outcome of me literally chilling in a pool for five hours might genuinely not be unproductive. So it's fine. And I I, I understand that. And you and don't I, judge yourself for that, right? Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Like I don't, I, I, at this point, I see that I earned it like for, for myself, but um, in the, like, I can only do that for the last maybe year or so, because I'm working on the business, not in the business. That's the very first time I'm, I'm able to do something like that. And yeah. I genuinely see if I'm sitting with my brother, we're just hanging out in a pool, we find the best ideas ever versus me sitting in the office and doing something actively for the business. Like nothing would have worked as it works if I wouldn't be able to think about the things like I do. So, yeah. Yeah. So very interesting. How would a person who's generally very busy because they're not at this stage of their business, how can they implement this on a very basic level uh, in their weekly routine so that they also have some time for creativity? Let's say they don't have any employees yet. They're doing everything by themselves. They have the right mindset but they don't have much time for, let's say, uh, just uh, scheduling out a day uh, or two for just thinking. How can you do that in a more basic version? So the first step um, is going to be breaking down what you actually do. Before you do everything, you need to make sure that you understand what your tasks consist of. For example, I was talking to a guy he has an email marketing agency and he's doing e email marketing for mm -hmm. e-commerce. Basically, he was telling me, yeah, I, I'm stressed all day because I'm doing fulfillment. I have to write the copies, doing the design, doing all of that. I have to do everything for my clients. I cannot, I don't have time to do the marketing. And I asked him what he's actually doing. Like genuinely, what are you doing? Number one, technical bullshit problems. Number two, designing the emails. Number three, communicating with the clients. Number four, copywriting. All of a sudden we have four very specific tasks and two of them are very basic. Designing and, and technical issues can be outsourced super easy. And I told him that and I asked him, how much time does it take to do those two, two things? And he's like, yeah, 50% of the time. All right, there we go. Find a person who's going to do the basic, basic things. And you're going to think you're this genius who is the only person capable of doing the things you're doing and reality you're wrong. In reality, there's hundreds of people which are better than you at basic tasks and they don't even need high level. Like they don't need any high skill level. They, they're, there's so many beginner things everybody is doing. You can just outsource that. And that's the very first thing you need to do before you can even allow taking time off. I, I wouldn't recommend anybody taking time off to think in terms of like, just chill in the pool for four hours. I'm going to be yeah. productive and come up with something. No, make sure you have the systems in place and then you earn yourself to do that. Yeah, exactly. And I think the problem is not the amount of time that those tasks have. It's more about shifting focus because you have to shift from a, let's say in this example, you have to shift from a designer to a copywriter to a project manager and to an operations manager. Whereas if you just hire a designer, they're just doing this stuff all day. Like it's just another thing on top of them. 
and they are already warmed up. Like they have four or five more projects to work on. You work with a freelancer and they're like, fine, I'm, I'm going to have everything ready in 15 minutes. Like if you, if you have a decent freelancer. So like you outsourcing is going to save you time and it's going to give you a better quality outcome. And you're going to have a lot more focus. Yeah. So that can be very big, especially in, for example, dropshipping business where you have a lot of stages. Like you have to do the copy, you have to do the product page design, you have to do the media bank, you have to do the product research. So there's a lot of little steps involved in that. So you can only squeeze out the maximum out of this business model if you learn how to put the right people for the right positions on every stage of the chain. That's why I think dropshipping is quite hard to uh, to start off well with because it's not like compared to some more specific services. It's not um, it's not just one skill that you have to learn with some complementary skills. Like you have to be at least somewhat decent in a lot of different skills. You have to be decent in video editing. You have to be decent in market research. You have to be decent in copywriting and in web design. And if one thing, in, if one part of the funnel is very, very bad, like I'm not saying it has to be perfect, but if one thing is very bad, it can ruin the whole thing and you won't make a single dollar. So first, you need to become at least somewhat good in all of those skills in order to convert profitably. And then you need to find the best people that can pin all those gaps in order to squeeze out the maximum profit. Because let's say you have, um, I don't know, uh, the best website designer and also some very cool technical guy to do a lot of research and do some some cool, uh, cool reports for you. But then your video editor is just somebody that you're paying $10 for a video for. And they, they make shitty creatives and you, then you run those creatives on Facebook and nothing works. Like, of course it's not gonna work. It's the main constraint of the business. So, yeah. It's always one one issue. Like what you said with, you just didn't have PayPal installed. Everything was perfect, but you literally just didn't have PayPal installed. It's the same thing here with everything is perfect, and just the creative is wrong, just the product is wrong, just the product page is wrong, just something is off, your ad account is bad, whatever. And the main, main problem is not that. The main problem is you don't know what it is. You cannot yeah. identify the issue. And this is the moment where you actually start really understanding the value of outside perspectives, where you understand it's not working, I have my guess. I have no clue if it's correct or not. That's the first thing. And the second thing is if people, for example, start working with you, they will have, like, they, they will be able to have a person who's going to look over them and they're going to understand, all right, I'm going in the right direction. It's not going to be the thing where you second out yourself every single time after you do something. If you do something, you don't even know if it's 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 the correct action and you might stop doing it even though it was you did everything perfect let's say you have a really good facebook strategy you test one product it doesn't work you quit and you do tiktok ads you just quit you had a perfect strategy you didn't do it because you second out yourself however maybe your facebook strategy sucks and you should quit so that's exactly where a mentor comes in and is looking over your shoulder and is going to tell you if you're going in the right or wrong direction, that's like 50% at least of the work of a mentor. Just telling you, yes, no. Just pointing you in the right direction. Because if you have that, you will not quit as well. You will understand, all right, I'm going in the right direction generally. I should keep doing this. And and that's, that's what most people do in the beginning. They do trading, affiliate marketing, drop shipping, Forex, whatever they all like. They do too many things at the same time. And then within dropshipping, there's also TikTok organic, TikTok ads, Facebook ads, Google, SEO, whatever. There's too many different things and everybody's preaching their thing is the best. So it's impossible to, to, to detect what's right and wrong. You just need to pick one person and keep working with them until it works. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's the only, only way that has ever worked for me. Just sticking to one person saying no to pretty much everything else, sticking with the strategy, and that's it. 
like i i would be i would i would say that if back then we were telling what we were doing with our stores and stuff like that to the to the older gurus that were popular on youtube and stuff like that they would laugh at us like they would say oh who's uh, who's do, still doing this stuff free plus shipping doesn't work i remember we were doing very specific targeting that by the way was converted like 10 plus percent this stuff wouldn't work you have to go broad you have to do this and that and i was like hell no like good that we actually didn't listen to those people and just being laser focused and just making it work with that specific strategy, with that specific person, without mixing things up, for me, was the only way to ever do it successfully. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, I think it's just, it's it's just like, it's just a reassurance of going in the right direction, plus actually having real, real guidance from the right person. And it's very, very important to pick a good person because yeah, like... uh, I've had so many people come to me after having worked with like five mentors and it's, it's really difficult to identify who's good and who's bad. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's also like half of the game. It's just literally, literally just identifying who's legit. And so obviously because your channel is new, I can a hundred percent reassure here. If people are thinking about joining or whatever they, they like, if they have that thought process in general, I will vouch for you overall. Like I know for a fact you are legit. You did a shit ton of money with everything. And I can like, I can, I can take a lot of doubts out of people's heads that this entire thing works. If if you already are making money, I probably don't know anybody who's better at scaling an existing profitable e-com store, especially with Facebook. You're the top guy. So yeah, that's it. Appreciate the words. Like really means the word to me. And yeah, but it was only possible with like a very good mentor to begin with. I remember back then I was, I was just, it was the time of just scrolling in groups and seeing screenshots left and right. And I saw a random guy who posted their screenshot. And the crazy thing is I was not looking at the guys who are posting 200, 300K plus months. I saw the guy who did 50K and I was like, okay, this guy looks like just as young as me looks legit he didn't do that great numbers so it seems kind of doable so let's let's connect with him and then he connected me with you uh and that's how it all started so it's so it's just believing in the stuff and it was actually real because he was a real student obviously and then i got a real mentor who really taught me one-on-one and that's pretty much the thing that unlocked it for me so like now, three years later, um, what is what is your specialty and what is the thing that you're teaching the most and how can new people get into the e-commerce space and not be burned by uh, by just spending useless money on ads and uh, spending money on mentors that don't work? So what is it for now that is best for beginners? Yeah, so if you're just starting out with dropshipping, I have... Over the last six years, I've never seen a better strategy than what we're currently teaching, which is TikTok organic. Um, genuinely, there's nothing better I've ever seen in my whole life. If you, if if you just imagine this, imagine this, we have the skill of going viral, which is an actual skill. Most people think it's luck. It's not. You, if you go, you you can replicatably learn how to go viral on TikTok. Then. You learn how to take the views and convert them into sales. So you go viral and everybody who sees the video, you retarget them with a bunch of call to action videos. And you also have like a really good store and the videos themselves, which already go viral are not going viral because of weird stuff, but they're actually going viral because the product is so good. If you have those two things in place and you know what a good product is and have like a product research method in place, you make instant 10 to 20k in profit per month that's it like that's a very very realistic number which you can hit right off the bat in a few months which like me saying it sounds unrealistic but it's actually the very like it's actually the case if you post 300 videos and take proper feedback from people who already went viral and already converted you're gonna make more than 10k profit per month it's as simple as that 
So it's it's like it's it's wild to actually even think of this opportunity right now with organic because most people are thinking about dropshipping is dead, whatever. 2017 was the easiest thing. I would genuinely say this comes close to 2017 dropshipping. This is like this is so much easier than everything I've ever seen in my whole life. So yeah. If you guys don't know me and want to check me out, Michael Bernstein uh, on YouTube. And um, yeah, check out the videos there. We have a bunch of play, like case studies with tons of students. You can just go to that playlist and see for yourself. Yeah, I mean, TikTok organic is just called, like I was so skeptical at first that, oh, like you go viral once, but then what happens afterwards? Like I didn't see the formula behind it, you know? But now that I'm seeing it with with uh, with Jacob, I'm seeing it with Mikey again, and all those people are like they're they're making very very good profit. And what's more insane is the profit margin. Like they're netting fifty percent, sixty percent, sometimes seventy percent margins with TikTok organic offers, which is something that is unseen in the e-commerce space with paid ads. Mm -hmm. And also, I've seen I've been seeing so many good brands that are scaling with TikTok organic. If you know these guys, I think it's mini katana or whatever they're called. All of their stuff is organic. Tops chocolate, the same thing, $10 million brand, over 40% net margin. And then that's a huge brand with a big amount of overhead. Like it's, it's crazy. And the valuations on those companies, I'm sure they're gonna also be crazy. Like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, expected return when it comes to pay that but they can never be the margin of tiktok organic and what's crazy is that it's also replicable in other countries so like you don't even need to be based in the us to do this you could be in your local country germany i don't know uk whatever like you can crush it in those markets and it's gonna be like i don't know i'm not even sure but probably even get viral more easily in those countries i have no idea but I've been seeing crazy results from students. It's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, I mean, definitely check out Michael's uh, Michael's YouTube channel. Uh, it was amazing to reconnect and just spit out some facts on the e-commerce space right now because there's a lot of fake people, agencies, cameras, crews, all that stuff who just spit out bullshit. And we want to keep things real and simple. So thank you, Michael, for uh, for for joining this.